All right, guys, so really quick before we get into this video, I want to let you guys know that if you want an opportunity to be featured at the end of my next video with a shout out, all you got to do is drop a comment or a question down in the comment section. Let's get into this video. So today in this video, I want to briefly talk about the Canon EOS R, the camera that got so much hate last year, and for good reason, right? It didn't stack up to the competition on the spec sheet. It was just an expensive looking camera. And on paper, it just didn't stack up with the competition, and that just is what it is. But you can't really judge a camera by the specs of it. So I've had the pleasure of owning the Canon EOS R for the past two months. And I just wanna to talk to you guys about what I like about this camera, what I don't like about this camera, and who that I think that this camera is for. So when I do videos like this, I always gotta let you guys know what I do, just in case you just randomly stumbled across this video and the suggested page, or you searched this to the search engine. Me, myself, I film music videos and I do YouTube videos. I don't do real estate, I don't film short films, I don't do weddings. That just is what it is, take it for what it's worth. So for the past couple of years, I've always owned two cameras. One camera to specifically film my YouTube videos on and one camera to specifically film my music videos on. And I've been so desperately looking for that one camera that does everything. And I don't think that this is that camera either, <laughs> but we're still gonna talk about it. So let's get into the things that I do like about this camera. But before we get into the specific things, I just wanna get the obvious ones out of the way. Things like the swivel screen for one. The swivel screen is obviously a plus on this camera. You really don't understand how convenient it is when filming yourself to have a screen that you're able to touch. It's color accurate. You can expose your image. You can set your white balance to manual. And you can also compose your shots in a creative way. You really don't understand how convenient this is until you have one. So the screen obviously is a plus. The second thing is the colors. You guys hear how good Canon colors are all the time. This is something that you guys know. This isn't new. But me, I just want to take a second to talk briefly about Canon C-Log. Canon C-Log is by far the easiest log profile that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Straight out of the gate, it's very easy to get your image to something that looks good without the image breaking. And even on this 8-bit Kodak, the footage holds up well with heavy grades. Another really dope thing about the Canon C-Log profile is it gives you a C-Log assist, which lets you preview your log footage in a standard profile so you're not filming with the ashy, uncontrasted image. The third, dual pixel autofocus. You guys know the autofocus of Canon cameras is always fire. But these are all things that are relative to pretty much any consumer Canon DSLR camera on the market. I wanna specifically talk about a few things that I like a lot more than I thought I was on the Canon EOS R. The first one is the body design. Owning a Sony a7 III, you don't really realize how bad the body design feels in your hand until you pick up one of these. You just realize like, dang, I didn't even notice that this was bad, but the Canon EOS R, the grip of it, the way it feels in the hand just feels so good. And this is something so small, but it adds a lot to the user experience of this camera. The second thing is the 4K time lapse. I didn't think that I'd be using this as much as I do, but the 4K time lapse in this camera is really good. The fact that it stitches the footage in camera, the output's 4K, it's really easy to set up. This is something that I've been using a lot in this camera that I really enjoy. The third thing that I actually really like about this camera that I didn't really look into when it came out looking at the spec sheet is the bit rates within the resolutions that this camera offers. This camera has incredibly high bit rates in pretty much all resolutions that it offers, even 720p. Yeah, 720p. I actually sat down one day and decided to test out the 120 frames per second at 720p on this camera, and it's totally usable, which surprised the heck out of me. I actually got a whole video on it. Make sure to click and check this out if you haven't already. But yeah, this camera has incredibly high bit rates for the resolutions that it offers. Now, most of the time when you hear about resolutions, you just look at the overall resolution. Like this does 4K, this does 1080, uh, but it's not as black and white as you think. So for comparison, the Sony a7 III does 4K at 100 megabits per second. The Canon EOS R does 4K at 480 megabits per second. So without even knowing what bit rates do, you can see that the bit rate on the Canon EOS R is way higher than the bit rate on the Sony a7 III when it comes to 4K. So basically bit rate helps you retain information and overall quality within a resolution. So despite the fact that so many cameras on the market do 4K, the bit rate is something that can help you differentiate the overall quality of that 4K within the camera. Not all 4K or 1080p or 720p is created equal. The next thing that I actually really like about this camera is the manual focus assist. I really enjoyed the manual focusing options and assist options on Lumix and Sony cameras like Peking. And for the longest, consumer DSLRs from Canon didn't really offer any manual focus assist. They had like the magnifying feature where you can zoom in and adjust your focus right there. But after that, it was nothing on the screen to help you manually focus. The Canon EOS R has a really good manual focus assist option that I've been enjoying a lot while using this camera over the past two months. And the next thing that I actually really love about this camera 
is the variable ND adapter. Now this isn't technically built-in NDs, but until you've used the system that is this similar to built-in NDs, you don't understand how inconvenient it is to grab a lens and to screw an ND filter to that lens every single time you wanna change. And honestly, since I've been using this adapter, I don't even carry NDs in my bag anymore. This adapter isn't the cheapest thing in the world, but once you start tallying up how much it would cost you to actually get a quality variable ND filter for every single one of your lenses, the value that it's providing is worth it for sure. This ND adapter is definitely a game changer for me. One of my favorite things about using this camera. Honestly, over the past two months, using a Canon EOS R has been mad fun, but it hasn't all been dessert and whiskey. It is a substantial amount of things that I don't necessarily like about this camera. But before we get into those, I gotta give a shout out to the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. You guys see me talk about Squarespace all the time. Squarespace is a really good platform for you guys to start a website, host a website, purchase a domain. It's just a really easy place for you guys to up your online presence with a website. Squarespace has really good all-in-one designer templates for you guys to use. So if you've never created a website, it's gonna be really easy for you to get on Squarespace and get your website up and running in no time. So for you guys out there who are interested in upping your online game with the website, make sure you guys head over to squarespace.com right now and start your free trial. And you can also head over to squarespace.com forward slash YCMHN for 10% and off your first purchase. Link will be down in the description. All right, so let's get the biggest elephant in the room out of the way right now, the crop on this camera. I hate the crop on this camera. And it's not because it makes the sensor closer to Super 35 or APS-C, it's because it makes me have to decide what lenses I wanna carry for the day. I don't have a problem with APS-C sensor cameras or micro four thirds sensor cameras. I actually prefer them in the grand scheme of things over full frame the majority of the time. Main reasons being the lenses tend to be cheaper and it's also easier for you to hold focus on those systems compared to full frame sensors. When you have a camera that uses the entire full frame sensor at 1080p, then when you go to 4K, it gives you a crop. It makes you decide on if you're only gonna be using 1080p or if you're gonna be using 4K. And if you do use 4K, it kinda makes you always have to have an APS-C sensor lens in your bag, which is a complete hassle for me. I like to travel as light as possible. So if you aren't only filming 1080p on this camera and you don't want to carry an array of lenses with you all the time, it kinda only gives you two options. The first option being just deal with the crop on your full frame glass and not compensating for it. And the second is you just carrying all APS-C sensor lenses and just using this camera as an APS-C sensor camera, which does not make any sense at all. I hate the fact that it makes me choose. For the past two months, the majority of the footage that I've been filming on this camera has just been 1080p. So me, myself, I've decided that I'm only really gonna be doing my sit down YouTube videos in the office with 4K using a Sigma 1835. And then if I want to use that 4K out in the field, I'll just have to deal with that crop on my full frame glass. But the fact that it makes me choose is something that I really hate about the crop on this camera. The second is no in-body image stabilization on this camera. The digital image stabilization on this camera works the majority of the time, but at the cost of an additional crop and also some really weird effects when you have an object in the frame that's moving significantly. The little digital dial arrow things on this camera, yeah, they kind of suck. I haven't really found a useful use for them yet. Personally, they're kind of just there and you know, you just kind of accidentally adjust something on the camera that you didn't mean to adjust. Just give us the joystick back. Like I get what you wanted to do, but it's not really that great. I don't, that, it, it kind of sucks, it sucks. The lack of a photography switch, something small, but if you've ever used like any Canon full frame camera, like you just know like that switch right there that switches you from video to photography. It's not there on this camera. It has a couple more steps and it's not big, but in the grand scheme of things, it kind of is. It kind of just slows you down a little bit. It's something small that you notice, but if you've never used a Canon camera, then you wouldn't know. But the fact that I've used pretty much all Canon full frame cameras, that switch right there, man, I miss it a lot. And the next little pet peeve that's just so small, but it actually matters a lot, is this camera doesn't really adjust certain stuff for you, and it's just annoying. So for instance, if you wanna do a time-lapse recording on this camera, this camera, you can't do a time-lapse recording using C-Log. And that's obvious because the time-lapse is just photography and it's pictures and you can't take pictures in C-Log. You would just expect the camera to just turn C-Log off for you when you're using a feature and then turn it back on. No, you go to click on it, it says, no, you can't use it. So then you gotta go in the menu, then you gotta turn C-Log off, then you gotta go back, then you gotta turn the time-lapse on, use your time-lapse. Then once you're done, you gotta go back and turn C-Log back on. But it's something so small, but it makes a world of difference. And it's something that you eventually get used to, 
But when I first started out using this camera, I used the time lapse. Then I went back to film and the majority of my shots were screwed because I was filming in a standard image profile, which I thought was just C-Log because C-Log gives you the standard preview when you're using the log assist and you just, I don't know, I screwed up a bunch of footage. I don't know, just something really small like that. And this also happens when you want to use time lapse and using a digital IS on the camera. You got to go turn the digital IS off, then go to time lapse and turn it back. It's just something so small, a little pet peeve that I've noticed. Not that big, but it matters. You get used to it, but it's, it's something small. I, I gotta put it in there. The EOS R isn't for everybody. In fact, it's not for the majority of people. It's a lot of other cameras out there on the market that are cheaper. They offer significant features that this one does not offer. The EOS R isn't the best at doing anything, but it's actually really decent at doing everything. The EOS R kind of has one thing going for it. It's convenient. It's wildly convenient in pretty much every aspect. The flip out screen, the 4K time lapses, the color profiles, the built-in ND, dual pixel autofocus. This is a really convenient camera to use. And honestly, over the past two months, the convenience alone in this camera has caused me to pick this up over every other option that I have at the moment. Convenience is a big factor with this camera that a lot of people don't really talk about. I think from now on in our camera reviews, we gotta kinda add convenience. We gotta kinda add a convenience section. How convenient is this system to actually use? Because this actually matters a lot. This matters a lot. A lot of upcoming filmmakers out there in the world, the red camera is like their dream camera to have, not realizing that the red would be wildly inconvenient for the majority of work that a lot of us do in the field. A lot of us don't have the budget to supply thousands of dollars in red mini mags. We also have wildly impatient clients who don't want to take the time in the middle of shoots to dump the footage or for us to create proxies and have to edit this footage down and do all the wildly inconvenient things about the cameras. We talk about how good cameras are a lot of the times, but we don't really talk about how inconvenient these cameras can be in certain situations or certain jobs where you have to use these cameras for. So I'm just going to leave y'all with that. It doesn't matter how good a piece of gear is if you hate using it and it's actually inconvenient to the workflow that you're using it for. The Canon EOS R isn't for a lot of people, but I I've actually been enjoying using this camera a lot just from a convenience aspect. Before I get up out of here, I wanna read a couple comments from my last video. The first comment comes from Melanin and Honey, and they say, I promise ATL ain't all that bad though. Now, ATL's fire. I hope you guys didn't get the wrong impression about me talking about ATL bad. My past week in Atlanta has been awesome. I've been having a ton of fun. I'm figuring things out. I really enjoy Atlanta. I just got into a car accident, which I thought was pretty funny to put in the vlog. <laughs> the next comment comes from Daniel Peens, and they say, I really enjoyed this vlog. Love new beginnings and how it offers an opportunity to redesign slash redefine slash reinvent. Glad you guys are okay after that head on, but keep an eye on that neck. Whiplash always comes back to bite you a few years later, especially if you don't take care of it properly. Be safe, bro. I appreciate that, man. I really do appreciate it. Honestly, that was like one of my biggest factors in moving to Atlanta. One of my biggest like things that I thought about when moving. I kind of wanted to start over. My life kind of became stagnant. Uh, I was becoming comfortable in the space that I was in. Uh, I just wanted to do some new things and kind of challenge myself and get outside of my comfort zone uh, for once in a while. Uh, I started to become very comfortable where I was and I needed to switch it up. So if you ever feel too comfortable, you feel like you're not progressing, you're not doing enough, just try to change something, get outside your comfort zone. The next comment comes from Devon and they say, big things, man. This is truly motivational and having other creators around you, I'm finding makes the struggle of being a creative entrepreneur more easy. Yeah, for sure, man. I'm glad that the content that I'm creating is inspiring and motivating you guys. That's just uh, one of the biggest goals that I want to put out there in the space and in the world when I create my content and put it out. The next comment comes from Versatile and they say, nice place. Uh, my question would be, how do you solve audio issues when you first get a camera? My 3.5 millimeter a live mic and bro video mic me doesn't work with the sony a7 III. i feel so limited i hope you are able to sort that accident out that's crazy uh, getting hit on camera though yeah for sure man it was wild so like for videos like this you guys can't see but uh like right here i'm trying to like put it in the frame so you guys can see it like right here i have uh, a microphone which is routed to an external recorder Maybe this is something that you can look into uh setting up for yourself because you can't actually utilize the microphone jack on your camera. So what I have to do in post is just, I just have to sync this audio up to the audio within the camera. And it's really just as simple as that. So I'll leave a link in the description to the microphone and external recorder that I use if this is something that you want to use. It's not cheap. 
it's not cheap by any means, but but you guys can hear the quality for audio that I'm able to get into my videos, and this will actually work for your problem. The next comment comes from Sharver Creations, and they say, yo, where can I get the black t-shirt with the clapboard on it that you wore at the end of this video? Great content. So the t-shirt that uh, you're talking about, we actually sold these like two to three weeks ago. Uh, we did pre-orders and that was pretty much it. Uh, we don't plan to restock these, but if you guys would like a restock on the directed tees, uh, make sure to drop that down in the comments and that's something that we will think about doing. And for the people who actually ordered the director merch from me, I appreciate the support and uh, the patience from you guys. I had like a slight hiccup with the company that I was going through to develop the t-shirts and hoodies. Um, so it was a slight delay, but everything that people purchase within this uh, drop is gonna be shipped out this week. So make sure to keep your eyes open for your package. It's gonna be coming soon, man. Appreciate y'all. Next comment comes from my homie Joe Moore Productions. He says, not the way I wanted to welcome you to it. Atlanta, uh, but glass half full, glad you were vlogging when all this happened. Uh, excited to have all of us in the same area now. Crazy dope content in the future. Yeah, for sure, man. Make sure you guys go subscribe to my homie Joe Moore Productions. Uh, he was the one driving when we got into that accident. <laughs> the next comment comes from Banks Audio Group and they say, I'm just happy to see a black young man living comfortably, doing what he wants to do. I have no questions. I appreciate that, man. I like to see everybody flourish, man. Win. I love wins. The next comment comes from AJ Felton and he says, I was not expecting that wreck at the time it happened. <laughs> yo, it kind of just popped up out of nowhere, yo. I just so happened to turn the camera perfectly at the time when it happened, yo. It was just, it was wild, man. And that was one of the craziest experiences for sure, creating a vlog for YouTube. And that's gonna conclude this video. Make sure to drop a comment down in the comment section for an opportunity to be featured at the end of my next video. If you guys have any questions regarding the EOS R, make sure to drop those down in the comment section. I'll answer those. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop it a like, comment, also subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I'm out, guys. Peace.